In 2014, NASA has chosen Boeing and SpaceX to build the vehicles that will transport its astronauts to the International Space Station. The loser is Sierra Nevada with Dream Chaser. Eight years later from that time, SpaceX Dragon has now flown five crews to ISS, but the number of Boeing Starliners, uh, zero. More seriously, due to lack of confidence, NASA's even delayed the first flight of Boeing CST-100 Starliner commercial crew vehicle with astronauts on board, a slip that will push back the spacecraft's first operational mission to 2024. Meanwhile, NASA's putting out a request to Sierra Space to submit their capabilities and qualifications to provide a rather redundancy commercial crew vehicle. When the Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC, lost out on the NASA crew contract in 2014 to Boeing and SpaceX, there were a lot of sympathetic hearts crushed. But SNC didn't give up. They took their crewed prototype design and reworked it as the Dream Chaser Cargo, an uncrewed, refurbishable ISS resupply spacecraft. It's a bit smaller than the original crewed concept. It's able to be tucked into a large Vulcan launch vehicle fairing. As a result, the SNC successfully won a bid to resupply the ISS on a Commercial Resupply Services II contract with NASA in 2016 and has been cleared for production. The other two companies' winners are SpaceX and Orbital ATK. This time, no name for Boeing. Boeing found out November 5, 2016 that NASA dropped its bid from consideration. Each of the three companies is guaranteed at least six missions to the ISS starting in 2019 under the new NASA contract. We picked them because it's a great proposal, said Kirk Shireman, NASA's ISS program manager, when asked about the SNC Space Systems bid using Dream Chaser. It's a really capable vehicle, and we're really looking forward to having it in our suite of options. NASA said it was careful in its selection process after the accidents and due to the complexity of proposals. That delayed contract awards by seven months and contributed to pushing back the earliest of planned flights under the new contracts from 2018 to late 2019. SNC Space Systems is a division of Sparks, Nevada-based Sierra Nevada Corp., a privately held aerospace and defense contractor. It acquired Louisville-based SpaceDev and in doing so picked up the Dream Chaser project that SpaceDev started on in 2005 under Sir Angelo's leadership. NASA has awarded SNC Space Systems $300 million towards Dream Chaser under past programs designed to stoke private sector spacecraft development. SNC invested a significant amount as well. Dream Chaser is a four to seven seat space plane based on a design originally created by NASA. It's designed to fly and land unmanned or to be flown by a pilot. NASA proposed the cargo resupply contracts to be worth as much as 14 billion collectively. Agency officials said they don't expect to spend that much, even if it goes beyond the minimum 18 launches and the three companies would split. NASA also plans to tailor missions and select which company spacecraft it'll use depending on the nature and size of the cargo. That makes it impossible to say how much the contracts would eventually be worth to any of the three companies, Shireman said. SNC Space Systems proposes to use the Dream Chaser space plane launched atop a Vulcan rocket to carry cargo up to and bring trash and scientific samples and pressurized containers back to Earth, most likely at NASA's runways at Cape Canaveral, Florida, which were built for the space shuttle program. The Dream Chaser's runway landing would give NASA and researchers the chance to take possession of returning research samples in as little as three hours. That's a huge advance for science and compared to spacecraft used now, says Julie Robinson, chief scientist for NASA's ISS. The quick return is especially valuable for research on understanding the effects of zero gravity on microbes, cells, or plants. Effects that can diminish quickly after samples return to Earth, she said. Such a rapid return is something science has lacked since the retirement of the space shuttle fleet, which happened shortly after the ISS was commissioned as a research station. Scientists have had to rely on samples returned by capsules parachuting into the ocean or onto land. If they have a really hard landing, they crash down or they've been at sea for a couple of days, that really disrupts things, Robinson said. Dream Chaser is a really nice addition to the ability we have now. NASA's selection of SNC's space plane returns a fully reusable space plane into the U.S. fleet again, Sarangelo says. What's really satisfying about this is its clear validation for even having this kind of runway vehicle for space, Sarangelo says. We're carrying the torch for the shuttle program and all the thousands who worked on it. Had we not won this contract, there'd be nobody working on this kind of vehicle.
Now, Dream Chaser Tenacity is almost ready for the first launch. In late October, NASA tweeted mentioning, Teamwork makes the Dream Chaser work. The first joint training simulation for at NASA and Sierra spaceflight controllers happened earlier this month. The teams practiced operations for the new Dream Chaser spacecraft to fly to the at space station. Sierra Space replied, highlighting, Our team enjoyed working with the NASA flight operation team preparing for the upcoming Dream Chaser CRS-2 cargo mission. This is an important step and a good sign that this first mission is coming along. More importantly, unlike Boeing, Sierra Space isn't building Dream Chasers just for NASA, but expects a bigger customer pool, including foreign governments and commercial opportunity. It's a great opportunity for researchers, scientists, and technologies that maybe represent industry consortiums from around the countries. However, to succeed in Sierra Space's goal for Dream Chaser, the program will require some serious infrastructure. Not just processing facilities, but places to land. Dream Chaser needs a runway to land softly, and luckily, there's plenty of those around the world it can use. Right now, the company's launching from Kennedy Space Center right there at Kennedy at Cape Canaveral, Florida. There's also their primary return landing facility they'll have for Sierra Space facilities right there for recovery, reprocessing, and getting ready for the next mission. They also have agreements in place with Huntsville, Alabama, for example. They have an agreement there with the Chamber of Commerce and some other companies, and they will have a landing facility and operation there, potentially. The company's even in talk with other countries for the same sort of application. They're actively pursuing other strategic partnerships where they can, in fact, return the Dream Chaser for missions outside the U.S. Their full anticipation is to stand up a pretty significant facility there, employ hundreds of people to house the facility and conduct the operation. It would be fully private, fully commercial endeavor, and Sierra Space would be pursuing those. After all, while we're having to wait at least another year to see Dream Chaser launch and then land at the launch and landing facility, hopefully the wait will be worth it. And if things go right for Sierra Space, this company could usher in a new era of commercial space opportunity. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. That's right, your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.